Welcome back to Fred in the Shed. Now today we're going to look at what is probably the lightest and the most simple portable antenna that you can possibly buy or make. It's called a T2LT antenna. Some people call it a bazooka antenna, some people a vertical dipole antenna. You know, call it what you want, but it's basically just a piece of RG58 coax that has been measured and partly stripped back. Now this is something that you could easily make yourself the plans are on the internet for saving time i bought one from ebay and i will link the seller in the description cost about 15 quid and i'm supposed to work really really well so that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to set it up and give it a test on fred in the shed so before we dive in set up and test this antenna well let's just think about antennas for a second common silver rod for example here is a section of thin aluminium tubes that are set to a precise length you transmit a signal through the tubes they resonate at a certain frequency and your signal gets out but what about fiberglass antennas such as the Antron 99 now fiberglass itself is non-conductive so that cannot resonate your signal so inside the tube you have a conductive element and it is that that transmits your signal out if you take an antenna such as the Serio Game Master for example, well here things are even more basic because what you have is a series of fiberglass tubes and inside is simply a wire. So really the T2LT portable antenna is kind of like taking the wire from inside a Game Master. All you need to do is find a way of suspending it so it is completely vertical. For example, you had a tall tree in your backyard or in your back garden, well that would be quite perfect, especially if it's got a branch that's about 10 metres off the ground, because you could throw up a wire and you could suspend one of these antennas from that, and uh, yeah, it should absolutely work fine. Now, as I say, I was tempted to make one of these myself, I did go on the internet, I looked at some of the plans, there are some videos as well. Some of the designs are a little bit more complicated than this one, they involve cutting the outer copper braid and then folding it back to a certain length along the actual an, uh, coax itself that makes the kind of uh, dipole element now I thought that would be quite tricky uh, I think that'd be pretty much impossible with RG58 you're gonna need a decent sort of uh, quality of coax so in the end you know 15 pounds delivered I thought well I'll just uh, buy this one in and I'm quite pleased I did because you know it seems to be quite well made to be honest you've got this sort of ballum coil at the end here and it's all been sort of sealed with heat shrink and uh, yeah I'm quite you know quite sort of quite impressed actually I, you know, I can't really sort of moan for the money that's uh, being asked here and it does appear that there is an element of adjustment if you go right to the very end of the uh, kind of inner coax here there is a bit that's been folded back with a little bit of heat shrink so I imagine that's probably just for fine tuning the SWR just sort of shortening and lengthening the end of the antenna so of course if like me you haven't got a tree in your back garden or yard you can need some way of suspending this at least seven meters off the ground so I decided to get one of these fiberglass flag poles now these are designed on campsites people like to put up these flags and uh, it's a little bit stronger than a roach pole. I was told not to buy a roach pole. I was told to get one of these uh, poles. Now, normally I leave links to in the description to things I buy. This one I'm actually not going to link because I did have one or two little problems with the supplier. Um, it kind of worked out okay in the end, but it was a bit hassly. So I'm not going to link this. But if you go onto eBay and you type in sort of telescopic flag poles, you'll see these all over the uh, eBay. Typically this is an 8 metre length of pole here and this one coming just over sort of £30. Okay, enough talking, let's get this out in the garden and set it up and get some testing done. So I'm going to use the ever faithful cast iron umbrella stand that's been used on other antenna videos. And up the antenna, it's not too difficult, uh, I just use a piece of electrical tape and attach the end of the coax here to the end of the pole and then it's just a case of sliding the telescopic lengths of the pole out and twisting them to sort of lock them in place it's only a friction fit and I have read that it's best to use a perhaps a little bit of electrical tape if you're going to leave it up for maybe the whole of a weekend DX trip or something because it uh, does have a tendency to slide down especially once you've got the antenna weight on the pole itself 
Here it is, vertical. Now I used a eight meter pole. That's probably about the minimum you can get away with, with this antenna. Of course, you can you can go longer. Nine or ten meters is certainly ideal. But I've got to get this in the car. So it's just a question now of uh, testing the SWR. This is only going to be just for my holidays, of course, not a permanent sort of setup. So I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm not going to get too caught up in this. As long as it's below two, I'll be happy with that. I know the radio is sort of safe. And yeah, I've got 1.5 on the channel sort of three. So I shot it just up close to the 40. And yeah, the SWR dropped down a slight bit. So there was a bit of room for adjustment if I really wanted to go into the antenna and tune it slightly. But for me, you know, that's safe, that will do, that's perfectly fine. In the shed shack, don't uh, get much use in the winter out of this, it's more of a sort of summer thing. So we're going to use the CRT SS9900 for this test and my little toolbox power supply which I made oh, a few months ago now and uh, inside that is a little LED power transformer, little PSU, little switch mode transformer uh, puts out about 16 and a half amps maximum which uh, is probably a little bit low for the 9900 normally would like 20 would normally like 20 but uh, it should be okay for this test and very very cheap the little PSU inside this uh, nine pound nine pound fifty they are now on eBay we'll have a little look when I want to run it we'll have a little look inside that and I might link, link the video down at the uh, bottom if you want to make one of these for less than a tenner so yeah I've got the SO, we've got the antenna up, um, check the SWR and got it down to about sort of 1.2 uh, 1 so uh, pretty pleased with that so I just need to get on to messenger now I'm going to message Dave Tango Mike or Charlie Tango 061 and Dave's going to come on also using his 9900 so it's going to be 9900 to 9900 um, you know it, the antenna's low of course it's only one meter off the deck um, it wouldn't be much use maybe on FM where you, you sort of need kind of like line of sight but on sideband you can get away with a low antenna as long as your noise level is low and it's not too bad today it's about sort of two to three maybe four a push so uh, yeah I'm hoping to get out today uh, Dave, now I'm south St Albans Dave is up in the north of St Albans so we're kind of one there sort of one over here there's a lot of infrastructure in between us you've got the whole town you know, high-rise buildings, um, there's a big hill as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on in between me and Dave. Dave normally gives me about an S7 to 8 signal, depending what radio he's going to use. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what I give him. I'm sure I'll make the trip, uh, but hopefully I'll give him a uh, readable signal. Anyway, let's get on with that. I'm just going to go message Dave and tell him I'm ready, and then we'll... Uh, 26, Charlie Tango, 16.64. 061 call. Yeah, 061 return in. Uh, good afternoon, Fred. Uh, uh, yeah, I think you said you were going to uh, use the 9900 with the T, uh, whatever you call them, the TLT2 or whatever it is. Uh, back to you. Yeah, that's a Rog Dave. Yeah, using the uh, T2LT the wire bazooka antenna, um, just about a metre off the ground, so not very high. So uh, what's my signal report to you, Dave? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, over. Yeah, well that's amazing. If that's only a metre off the ground, Fred, so you're giving me a signal seven spot on, boosting up another uh, segment to eight, but uh, a steady seven and a radio five. I mean, that is amazing. Back to you. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for that, Dave. Um, yeah, your your S7 to me, S7, um, Radio 5, bringing in a little bit of noise with the antenna, um, just a sort of slight bit of background noise that I wouldn't normally have got with the Antron. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be, you know, it seems to be working. I think if it was a little higher off the ground, it would uh, probably work even better. But that's not bad, is it, Dave? That's not bad for basically what is, what, three or four pounds worth of RG58 coax. Back to you. Well, to be quite honest with you, Fred, I'm surprised. I mean, uh, I uh, wouldn't have thought that would have worked so well, seeing as you're only uh, just off the ground there, find out a metre. That is truly amazing, mate. I mean, I know we're not that far apart, but what
Yeah, Roger there, Dave. Yeah, it is quite good, as I say. I'm just getting, I'm just getting quite a little bit of noise coming in. I got about S, uh, S5 to 6 of noise, which I think is just because it's so hemmed in. I'm so hemmed in with the houses around here. You know, I'm ringed by houses. Um, okay, Dave, look, what I'll do is just for a, a bit of a laugh, I'll disconnect it and then I'll connect the Antron on the side of the house and then uh, we'll see the difference, yeah? We'll see what difference the signal makes at your uh, QTH, Dave, over. So that's good old Dave there. He, <laughs> I always like pick on him when I want a signal report. So just getting quite a bit of noise in there coming across with Dave's signal. So I'm just going to swap the antenna over and we're going to put the Antron uh, 99 on. Now, of course, that's you know right up over the top of the roof apex. It's a little bit unfair, but I'm just going to see if that brings down that uh, noise, whether it's just there's a lot of noise today or that is the fact the antenna is so low that I'm bringing in quite a bit of noise. So let's see how it gets on now. Right, let's give him another shout, shall we? Poor old Dave. 26, Charlie Tango 1664, Charlie Tango 061, call. Yeah, 1664, uh, 061 returning. Well, the modulation is much, much louder there, Fred. Uh, very clear. Uh, no noise coming through you with you at all. And uh, you're uh, a couple of S points up there, so you're Sort of uh, 8 to 9 there, uh, no problem at all. Just come back again and I'll give you an exact reading. Back to you. Cheers, Dave. Uh, yeah, 1664. Um, OK, Dave, I'll waffle on. Yeah, you to me, obviously, you're a couple of uh, S points higher, 8 to uh, eight to 9, and uh, you're certainly louder, bringing in less noise. Still a little bit of noise today. It's a bit noisy on the band, but uh, less... less uh, you know, less noise coming in. Okay, Dave, uh, audio, 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 and how's the signal on the Antron 99, over. Yeah, a dead signal eight and a good, good radio five. Not so much noise coming within you. Nice and loud, a lot louder, a uh, lot clearer. A nice radio five and a good signal eight. Back to you. Good old Dave. So, yeah, obviously, you know, it's it's a bit unfair to compare that little TLT to TLTT to the Antron 99, but receiving-wise, it was only really one S point down on what the Antron was doing. It did bring in quite a little bit more noise, as you'd expect, but, uh, you know, come on. For an antenna that costs £15, um, certainly certainly doing the business it's certainly certainly working so i'm pretty pleased with that actually you know quite uh quite su quite surprised it's surprising isn't it just a little bit of cheap coax sling it up um what you can do and if you had a tree in your back garden if you had a tree you wouldn't need that uh, pole that i've i've spent the money on you could just sling it up over uh, the branch of a tree you know a bit of wire or a bit of string pull it up and you could be on the air well in, in theory for about uh, five quid so, uh, okay, that concludes that part. So before I go, we're just gonna do a little check on that uh, LED lighting, that switch mode PSU. And I've done a few overs there with, with Dave. And that's, bare, well, that's barely warm. It's pretty much cold, to be honest. So, you know, a lot of people are against these, and I understand why. Um, you might not want to connect your expensive HF radio up to one of these. If it did cross or something, it might, you know, could potentially kill the radio but that's the same with any switch mode power supply and that's all this is is it's just a cheap switch mode uh, power supply I don't know it depends how you feel about it nine you know nine pound fifty um certainly works certainly works powering the radio at uh, full power no, no drop in power you know if you're on a tight budget and you really need to get yourself on the air well less than ten pounds or you know if you the box was a quid so what i'll do is i'll, I'll link in the uh, the video to this when this video ends it will come on just in the bottom corner here so have a click on that if you want to sort of see how i built that uh, and there was a link to uh, to buy these i did check them out nine pounds nine pound 49 
<laughs> that's crazy. Anyway, going to cut this one off now. So there you go, that's the uh, little mobile antenna. That's what I'm going to be using on my holidays when I go away uh, in the summer down by the coast. Going to be using that and uh, maybe in the future might think of building a magnetic loop antenna, but uh, that's a whole different ball game. So cheers, thank you very much. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you like it. it. That helps my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe and then you'll get a notification when I uh, put up some more videos. But as for now, I'd like to say cheers. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll catch you all on the next one.